toffee apple waffles. And I'm just having strawberry banana again. Because I'd rather not. I'll show you. The I this is um per five caramels. That's and um I use 35 in this Yikes. pot with that much. So I don't know. Um different color? Well, I kind of over, I overheated oh, it a bit. Okay. Sorry. Oh, it'll probably be great. Yeah. I don't mind. Stuff yeah. Well, I tasted a little, a little bit just to okay? make sure you did and the it was cook okay. Tasting thing? Yeah. I, did. I guess you always got to do that, right? Yeah, you got to. So, um, I made for myself apple lime juice. So I put two limes in here with the apple. So we'll see how that wow. is. Okay. <laughs> it might be too sour because mm -hmm. I don't know if I made them from apples from my tree and my and oh you yeah, actually got not... some apples up the tree yeah well that's good you I were noticing how they were oh, uh, getting yum. ready to go oh. so um this is an awesome tree have you showed yeah. people the tree or? well what I did huh? yeah well okay. I should show show yeah. you just how loaded with apples yeah this, this tree year. I mean they're not big this year they're yeah but there's lots Right. But there's so many. And uh, this tree, it's had, what, two branches? Big branches fall down yeah. in the last, what would you say, five years? Well, it's getting ready to die. It's getting ready to die. So it's boy, oh really boy. putting out fruit. It's yeah. like, oh, I've got to make lots of babies. Yeah, it's but like in Shakespeare's play. Somewhere, I think it's Shakespeare's play, one of his plays, Rightness is All. And it's about... Uh, or it's uh, Rilke's thing. Lord, it is time. This summer was so, I don't know how to translate it, great or large or something. It's gross, but it doesn't mean gross like in English. Yeah. It was, this summer was so huge. Yeah. And this summer was. So thank you, Germany. Well, he's really from Austria, but German culture for producing Reiner, Rilke, Maria, you know? doesn't make up for Hitler, but uh, it goes a long way. Thank you. Maybe the greatest poet of all time. And I've translated at least two dozen uh, poets from two dozen different languages. Poor translations, but when you do it, then you have a better sense of how uh, these uh, people uh, put, it, put things together. So that's stuff from Latin, German, uh, German, Hungarian, Czech, on and on it goes, Chinese, Japanese, on and on it goes. I try to live up, I believe in cosmopolitanism. I know. I try to live up to my beliefs. You folks out there try it too. All you globalists, phony globalists. Well, unless All your you beliefs suck. Phony if your beliefs focuses. suck, please don't live up to them. Well, don't I mean, yeah. Don't visit them on other people. Well, yeah. They're, I'm talking to the hypocrites out there. There are lots of people who aren't hypocrites, and they're really scary. Yeah. If you want to kill people, please don't. Anyway. If you need more of the sauce, you go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does taste just like caramel, so. Yeah. And the burning, I don't taste it. Mm. Or whatever burning might have happened. Well, you know, I was doing a lot of things. I know. I mean, uh, along with <laughs> avoiding uh, places where dogs might have peed, or were they fairly good this morning? Oh. Last night, uh, a couple of dogs had some... Yeah, I heard you getting mad at Paris. Oh, she was awful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, she's peeing at the rate of about a couple of times an hour. Oh my God. No, no, no. Once every two hours. I'm, I just kind of, I can't say I just woke up, but uh, there's a nice guy going down the alley. One of the few we see in the alley is nice. Mm -hmm goes to work. Nice and quiet fellow. Looks to be very shy. 
So lately my waffles have been made with uh, steel cut oats and then I just whir them in the food processor to make them into flour. Um, xanthan gum powder instead of eggs but I don't I don't even know if with the oats honestly I think they'd stick together pretty well I don't even know if you need them it's just I have it around so chuck it in um I was thinking today about how we hear so much about oh don't eat uh, tropical fruits because there's so much sugar in them and stuff and it's like yeah I had banana yesterday and I'm like whoa holy because I'm not used to eating banana um very sweet and then I was thinking, you know, why even worry about that? Because there's so many, much other sugar sources out there. Like if you're drinking juice, like I made juice this morning uh, for myself. I mean, there's none of the fruit um, pectin pulp mm -hmm. in there to um, counteract all that sweet, right? Mm -hmm. To, you know, make it digest slowly. And um, we'll do that all the time. I mean, people don't even don't even go for real juice. They'll um, drinks. Yeah, they'll drink soda pop and whatever, Ooh. just several times a what, day. What are the know? other thing they call? It? There's drinks, and then there's I don't know. There's something that's happening. Fruit juice? No, there's fruit juice. Punch? Yeah, that might be another word. They're not. I don't use. know. Where it's fake stuff. Anyway, what was this argument again? Don't eat tropical fruit? Yeah, because there's so much sugar in it. But, wow, okay. And with, That sounds like garbage. Yeah. And with bananas, I mean, I can understand people saying, oh, well, stay away from bananas because they're not natural. They're genetically altered for, like, ages now. So... I can understand people saying that, maybe. Maybe, but I don't think so. Anyway, go on. But people think nothing of going out for a, a Sunday or whatever, and you'd have that much sauce on your Sunday, probably. And that is so much. That's so much sweet. How is it? Does it taste sweet enough or too sweet? Oh, uh, it tastes great. It's just perfect. Just good. Okay, so I put the right amount of sauce. I don't know how many caramels that was. I was trying to think, okay, how many am I going to make? That's know, pretty maybe good. Maybe 10? Mm -hmm. Lots. Anyway. And I don't do this to James very often. This is very much just a treat, and it's oh, just so that... Oh, you mean so the that, caramels? Yeah. No. It's right. just so that I can... I think people have seen... Like yesterday, it was uh, bananas and strawberries. Yes. Right? So, without any sort of uh, mm -hmm. sweet topping. Mm -hmm. And I mean, people normally put loads of maple syrup, or not even maple syrup, actually. They put the pancake syrup, mm -hmm. which is what is well, it? Just corn syrup and stuff, eh? Yeah. Which caramel color <laughs> and some fl yeah. artificial flavoring or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I'm afraid what's happening there is a form of stereotyping. Stereotyping can get you in trouble, not just other people. My soccer club at the university was called Nations United. Not United Nations. Nations, Nations United. We had uh, people from all over the world. We even had a, an indigenous American on the team, aside from me. And uh, we had a guy from Iran. And we had a guy from Greece, a guy from Ethiopia. We had a token white guy playing goal for us. He was a good guy. What was his last name? Oh, yeah, it was White. And, uh, 
I can't, I don't know if we had too many other white guys on the team, you know, Nations United, that's when I kind of used to believe in United Nations, and it was maybe a bit more credible back then, see the trouble is, it's kind of like a, a truism in political science, don't expect a political party that you've supported to stay the same, even from one election to another. A lot depends on the leader. A lot depends yeah, on... Yeah, like, good example is the NDP. They used to be the party that supported working Canadians. Yep. So they were like... They got a lot of support from unions and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, still do, but that's just the heads yeah. of the unions. But not the, not the people who work... Mm -mm. They do not support the worker anymore. What they do is they, their party who the vanguard is, is basically a bunch of academics. We'll call it the Brahmin class. And uh, then what they represent is our uh, claim to it is. Is a bunch of minorities, but what they really represent in those minorities are the full gauche left wingers in those minorities. So those people tend to be those folks. Don't take that wrong. They tend to be, uh, well, Marxists or uh, fellow travelers from Marxism. There'd be some anarchists thrown in there, junk like that. So it's increasingly become that. It's basically ever since the 60s. And so what happened in the United Nations is, at one point in time, I suppose the majority of nations in it were democracies. And then all of a sudden, there were all these so-called freedom movements in the late 50s, 60s, huge whack of new nations. You know, and it used to be in my practice up until this year, whenever I saw liberation or freedom movement, National Liberation Front, I would change that to independence, but now I've changed that. I'm going to be changing that too because they've tended not to be independents. They've tended to come to the people they see as neo imperialists with their hands out. Gimme, 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 gimme. That's not independence. Give us aid. We're incompetent. You only have to look at the former southern Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe to realize how it's not independent. They have a famine, self-induced. The thing is, they've been blocking the Americans from coming, hey, yo, like, we're boycotting you, that kind of stuff. Then all of a sudden, they have a famine. Oh, your hands out. Give me, give me, give me, give, me, give us, give us, give us. You see, the places, you look at the Soviet Union. There's a mutual boycotting going. The Americans aren't messing around with them. They're not messing around the Americans. They've got, what was it, one-sixth of the world's surface. They've uh, got a huge market in China after 1949, and they can't get it together. They bomb the economy. You look at India. They weren't hanging around with the Americans that much. It's a mission. Union Carbide did a number on Bhopal, no doubt about that. At least initially, and they bombed the economy. They weren't even communists, strictly speaking. They did five-year plans. How did they bomb the economy? They were basically per capita, at the start of what people call the Cold War. That was the second stage of the Cold War. So we'll say from 1947, that was the same level of per capita GDP as South Korea. 
and they're going around saying we are we're not allied and independent we're going to be hanging with the Chinese here they're our brothers maybe slightly bigger brothers uh oh big brother uh oh that didn't seem to bother them and then that was roughly the same time as 1984 that was published in 1948 We're going to have our allies, the Soviet Union. We're going to have five-year plans like these flunky... Oh, they're not flunkies. They're good dudes. Nehru's doing this. Hey, you know, a couple of years before he dies, I think he should have died of embarrassment. The Chinese invade, steal, not a bunch, but some land that they have claims to. Lots of people have lots of claims to lots of land. You just can't go around claiming it by fiat, military fiat as it were. Hey, we're taking this over because we're, we're Mao Zedong. We, we represent Mao Zedong and he's an awesome dude. So, how far behind did they fall? How far did they fall behind South Korea? Sorry, I've been reading Dutch and they put things... <laughs> well, I've been basically translating. I've been trying to take a course of Dutch it's not introductory anymore by going through an Agatha, Agatha Christie novel it would be the equivalent of a course it would be probably something the equivalent of 90 hours that I'll have spent in, in two weeks well there was a week break in there but yeah, you were busy three weeks all told me so I wasn't able to work on it mm -hmm. and it worked out to be uh, two weeks anyway they fell behind South Korea like um, I'd say South Korea has gone 18 times up per capita what India has 18 times that's not 18 plus that's the equivalent of saying okay uh, there you go people in uh, South Asia in India you're gonna have to make do on a thousand bucks a year and you people in South Korea you're going to have to put make do with on 19,000 a year you see that's what it means uh, like uh, we're gonna say 18,000 that's what it means 18 times could you live on a thousand bucks a year you could live you better be able to live on uh, 18,000 a year Pauline yeah, and I did. were living on 9,000 a year. Yeah, it's 18,000 yeah. between the two of us. Mm -hmm. 9,000 a year. So congratulations to South Korea for getting it together. All the fantabulous cars you've produced and all this sort of stuff. Pop music, I'm not so sure. K-pop, there are a lot of people who like it. But hey, it's probably better than the garbage coming out of the United States right now. So. And it's successful, you know? Like people going around, Hollywood, dominating the world. It's, and, you know, the biggest uh, movie industry in the world is Bollywood. I don't think I'm making it up. Yeah. When you look at K-pop, Korea is not the same size as the United States. It's got a huge population. People would be surprised. I'm talking about South Korea. North Korea, wow. Okay, that's amazing. But, um... You know, like uh, so-called Western culture is open to a lot of things. It's open up to food, to uh, novels from elsewhere. It's open up to poetry from elsewhere, music from elsewhere, art from elsewhere. It's maybe not open it up as much as it could be or should be, but it is opening up. So globalists do a bit of a job that way. You look at North Korea, are they cosmopolitanizing it? No, they're shutting things up. No, 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 we're not having this. And how, where are they sitting? They would have started at the same basic level as South Korea, back at the beginning of the Cold War. And where are they sitting? Roughly where India is sitting, or even lower. Maybe 120th per capita GDP of South Korea. Wow. See, that's what happens when you block the Americans. <laughs> hey, we're having none of your stuff. We're not, you're not going to let us exploit us. We're going to get 120th of the income we otherwise would have. 
but we're virtuous because you're not exploiting us. Okay. On to the next subject, kind of like. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it in the future. Keep on tuning in. Well, yeah, because then it's really, it's a matter of who's doing the exploiting and whatever. I, if um, people from other countries aren't exploiting, then it's going to be people within the same country that are exploiting people within their country. It's, um, in, in the end, the amiables get exploited the most. And they're getting exploited by the, by, I mean, but all passive personality types are being exploited. But even are, the uh, thinkers, exactly right. Yeah, but um, they're being exploited by the aggressive personality types. And in, and when you let um, aggressive people dominate without. Um, Competent without yeah, demonstrating and without competence. without the the law kind of restraining them, then um, In other through words, democracy. Democracy, yeah. Democracy then, is a rule of the law. Yes, that's exactly right. Then um, red always wins. It ends up, you know, and it's it ends uh, everyone up else loses. One person, everyone else loses. So even the, the, uh, the aggressive prop uh, propaganda. Yeah eventually they lose too so they lose their heads they're some of the first yeah, to go yeah because they're a bunch of yippers and yappers yeah and anyone with any sense realizes they don't really make much difference i mean even someone like lennon when tolstoy died about 1910 he wrote something like a a funeral uh elegy but <laughs> He's just laughing at Tolstoy. He basically says, it didn't represent reality, it doesn't mean anything. But you notice how the commies, they killed people who did, uh, yeah. who did uh, stuff, uh, poetry, especially music, especially uh, fiction, especially, who, uh, who didn't quite do stuff. And it, it could be even like form, like they hated formalism. They hated cosmopolitanism. They hated what they call formalism, which is concerned with what you've been concerned with, with poetry, form. Huh? They wanted uh, like folk type of forms and stuff like that. They they did folk music. It's it's significant that Pete Seeger, the mm -hmm. former commie, they say he g gave it up, but uh, I'm suspicious. I Oftentimes the commies would tell someone, you know, like... Uh, you're a commie, we recognize it, but you're going to go under cover. So you got to give the communism up. Right? An example are Burgess McLean and what were some of the other flunkies that were uh, horrible atomic spies and other type of spies too. Uh, and they came out of the British establishment and they'd been basically commies when they'd been going to university. Somewhere along that, and okay, cool up with that. And the the powers that be, and and the this amongst the spies in England, just say, oh well, they're they're aristocrats, or they're old boys. You know, they went to the proper school, so they've got to have seen the light. And they let them in. It's like letting in the uh, the books just go away. Anyway, horrible, horrible stuff. So enough uh, politics, I suppose. Any news about COVID? Me? No. Oh. Well, I don't. I haven't been. We haven't Listen been going to the, to the university to look it up. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. Here's one thing. Hmm. Jason Kenny, I think they were saying. Well, he was on holidays. Who gets three weeks of holidays? Yeah, which is funny he's because he's been I AWOL for three weeks or something. He's like taken that. these holidays, I suspect, because um, anybody would have known that the numbers would have been ramping up, and he doesn't want to have to close down schools and stuff yeah. like that. He wants them to start, and um, 
because if he starts shutting things down again, then his, his, uh, I mean, he has the wild roser, uh, people that he doesn't want us, them to split off. The very wild rosers. PC, so, um, yeah. Oh, he's a brute. So he's staying away and letting people, more and more people die, and the numbers just keep ramping up just so that he can, um, keep his job just so he can keep his job no the folks in bc so they're refusing to put out they're claiming they don't have them they're refusing to put out (laughs) estimations as to what's going to happen Mm -hmm. if trends keep happening yeah so bc is in election mode they're all in you see i think the federal conservatives have told jason kenny low profile you useless puke they might have even said useless puke and that's an understatement but uh, because he's worse than useless. Yeah. But I, I think they're, they're saying, okay, for the next, you know, for the last three weeks of September and then, or of August, August and the first three weeks of September, please stay undercover. Go on holidays. You know, go somewhere else. Spread the COVID around someplace, you know, and or bring some back or whatever. We don't care what you do because we're conservatives. But... Uh, and we're perfectly willing to take casualties so long as it's old folks who can't afford decent health care and all that sort of stuff. We'll take as many casualties as necessary. And we got to try to win this election. I think that's why Kenny's doing it. Anyway, the NDP and BC provincial governments in in, in election mode too for the federal government, for, for the federal election. Sure. And what they, they are projecting. Good. Oh, well, you were in the car. And they yeah. were saying it's doubling every... And I just, well, I said, let me guess, seven days. And they said, eight and a half days. I didn't have to do the calculation. Yeah, I couldn't remember. You know, but I knew how fast they were ramping up. Yeah. So I think it's a 1,000 this last week, and they're saying 2,000 the next week, if things continue the way they have been. And then it'd be 4,000 the next week. Three weeks down the road, oh, that's 8,000. That's new cases a day. But yeah, you remember that, how I, I was off by one and a half days, but I was just ballparking, just like off the top of my head, you know, as they were announcing, doubling every, and I said seven days, while well, I was driving the car, I didn't go like this, so. No. No, he keeps his hands on the wheel, except when he's shaking his fist. Oh, at people. Yeah. People driving. Yeah. That only started they since use, his um, his back. Since after his cancer, then he started shaking his back fist. Then. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, people. he didn't do that before. Believe me, it was still there. I just express it now. Yeah. Well, I'm I sure. I mean, people feel what they feel doesn't really change. But uh, what I've noticed is you bad drivers out there. Well, you're evil drivers, really. Yeah, I mean, you it, tend to a do it in threes. Is, is a weapon, really. It's a, it's worse than a loaded gun. I mean, you could well, huge really numbers of people get killed. What is it? It used to be fifty thousand people. It yeah. maybe's gotten a, a little bit better in some ways, a little worse in others, in the United States because you know, seat belts yeah. and um, the inflatable Air bag, airbags, yeah. and so on and so forth. But then you've got these big.